And with all that, the future is here, and now we can actually use this deep learning stuff for real business applications, like cat, not cat. Uh, that's how the Google Photos thing works, where you can type in cat and it pulls up uh, images of cats. But it's not all cat and no cat. Airbus, one of our customers, is in the business of making high-quality satellite image maps. And it's not a very high-quality map if it's covered in clouds. So you do a few flyovers, and you'd want to remove the cloud cover. But see, the clouds change, so does the snow, but you want the snow, and you don't want the clouds. And so then maybe, imagine this task, my friends, you have to do it, you go into the photograph and pixel by pixel determine which one is snow and which one is clouds. Is that a job you want? I mean, maybe, I don't judge you. I prefer to spend my time a different way. I would much prefer to have a machine learning system identify for me, hey, these ones are possible clouds, approve or deny these changes. So now I'm more the supervisor of the system rather than the manual laborer who has to do it all by hand. In communication, I don't speak Chinese, but uh, I'm assured that this is not a word-for-word -word translation. You can use deep learning to capture meaning, power things like Google Translate, or cutting out communication drudgery. I know how you love to actually type out those words that you use over and over again in your emails. You prefer to write the full thank you rather than th. Uh, now, to cut out some of those, dr that drudgery smart reply gives you those three options, and if one of them seems like what you were going for, you can select it, and if not, you just keep writing. So it helps you make uh, your life less tedious. Playing games. This game playing AI seems pretty frivolous, and yet, the math powering this is pretty close to the math powering those self-driving cars. But you know, at Google, we let nothing go to waste. So we figured, how can we use this game-playing AI to do something useful? Let's give it a useful game to play. And the game we gave it was the game of data center. As inputs, it gets information about what's going on with the data center. Its joystick is the cooling system controls. And instead of that, high score, its score is energy efficiency. Get the energy efficiency to be as good as possible. Now before, the way to solve the problem of how can we make our data centers more efficient, it was a standard analytics approach where a bunch of analysts and a data science team would go and collect data and think about it and profile it really carefully and then think some more, suggest some changes, test what that would mean, and they'd get maybe like a one or two percent improvement, which you shouldn't sniff at, a one or two percent improvement in energy efficiency in a data center is a huge thing. Huge cost savings and pretty good for the environment too. Now, when we gave this to AI, what do you think the improvement was? If you don't know the answer already, what would your guess be? 15%. I hear 15%. Bold, 15%. That's a lot of money saved. 15% going once, 15% going twice. Sold for 15%, except the answer is 40. <laughs> yeah, huge savings and an incredible reduction in carbon footprint. And there's so, so much more you can do with it. Have a look at all these different bits of inspiration, but I've got a different way to get you inspired. So how to get started. <laughs>